Towners is a 1970 comedy film starring Jack Lemmon and Sandy Dennis. It was written by Neil Simon and directed by Arthur Hiller. It tells the unfortunate story of George and Gwen Kellerman, who travel to New York from Ohio for a job interview that George has scheduled for the following morning. What begins as an exciting trip quickly spirals into a nightmare of increasingly more insane delays and catastrophes. The Out of Towners is an incredibly funny movie, but it's almost stress-inducing and fairly chaotic. We don't get the luxury of any slow introductory scenes at the main character's home. The movie doesn't even let us get close to their house. It starts in a wide shot from above and quite far away, looking down at the hapless Kellermans as George is desperately trying to get Gwen in the car and off to the airport. Right from those first moments, they're in a rush, and George especially is in a barely controlled panic. And speaking of George, Jack Lemmon delivers a brilliant performance, as does Sandy Dennis. I thought each of them were perfectly cast and really sold almost every moment in this movie that gets fairly absurd with the number of obstacles that are thrown in their way. Jack Lemmon, as I said, is always just barely keeping himself calm, at least for the first few minutes of the movie. Once they're on the plane, he makes the first of many mistakes when he declines any food on the plane for him or his wife. And of course, they end up circling over JFK endlessly until the weather turns and they're forced to land in Boston. From that moment on, George becomes unglued, worried about not getting to New York in time for his interview. What is so funny and almost <laughs> aggravating at times is his insistence that Gwen not be nervous and telling her not to panic, when in reality it is him that is very nervous and always panicking. And Sandy Dennis as Gwen plays off him so well. She gently and patiently tells him she's not nervous and really tries to calm him down, but George is oblivious to her attempts. The scene on the plane is when I knew I was going to love this movie. The pilot repeatedly tells the passengers that they'll have a slightly longer delay, and each time George keeps muttering to himself and to Gwen, eventually ending up just badgering a flight attendant about what is taking so long. And once they land, the fun really gets going. First, their luggage is lost, and then they have to deal with a baggage handler who is not that interested in helping them. And then it's off to the lost and found desk, where they're helped by a very young and charming Billy D. Williams. A running gag starts around this point where whenever someone doesn't end up helping or isn't able to help them, George demands their name, and even some of their addresses, I think, shouting that they'll be hearing from his lawyers and that he is going to be suing each and every one of them. I'll try to not just end up laying out the whole movie beat for beat. If you've already seen it, you know how hilarious these situations are, and if you haven't, I'm probably not doing them justice. But that being said, in no particular order, they end up getting robbed, twice. They have a lengthy scene at the Waldorf Astoria, where George has a one-sided fight with the desk clerk about their hotel reservation. They get kidnapped by some robbers in a cop car. And, in one of my favorite moments, they stumble across a seemingly lost little boy in Central Park. As they are without money after their robberies, George decides to find out if the little boy has any spare change on him, and quickly ends up getting caught. What happens after that, I won't spoil. Also in Central Park, George breaks one of his front teeth on some stale Cracker Jack that Gwen finds on a bench. So for the rest of the movie, he is whistling his ashes. The two of them do such a great job in all of these scenes. And what the movie does so well is build up to the crazier situations. It starts off with fairly relatable travel issues that many people have experienced, and then leans into all the fears that a person might have when leaving home for a big city. And while Jack Lemmon is shouting and telling off everyone he meets, Sandy Dennis plays much more of a slow, simmering character. And we watch her as all of these events pile up and wear on her until she's finally physically so beaten down by them that she can't even walk. I thought their dynamic was really well illustrated. They're smaller town people and they're used to a certain lifestyle. And they stick out quite prominently wherever they go. George, in particular, is talking constantly, as I said, reassuring Gwen, but really himself, and explaining their dilemmas to everyone they meet. It's a very dialogue-heavy script, and I enjoyed that. It presents many opportunities for very funny back-and-forth between the two of them, and also between them and the people they have to deal with. George is not a terribly likable character most of the time, but I think that worked in this case. I think if both of them had been 
naive innocence, you could lose sight of the comedy in favor of just feeling empathy for them. But with him being so impatient, and with his constant threats of litigation, you can just sit back and watch the fireworks. I absolutely loved the cinematography in the film. It's almost all handheld, and that adds so much immediacy to everything going on. As they rush through the train station or through an airport, the camera is almost jogging along beside them as George is pulling Gwen behind him, his other arm windmilling in front. I thought that style of shaky, jostling, almost documentary-style camera work at times really instills a hectic, rushed feeling in the movie. There are also some interesting POV shots, such as sliding down the baggage conveyor belt towards the throng of reaching people below, and also a couple of scenes where the camera finally stops moving and settles on something in the foreground, while the plot of the scene carries on outside our view. There was one scene where the camera positions itself behind a pile of garbage on a New York street, and we just hear George and Gwen's discussion on the other side, until they continue walking and the camera starts back up again. A similar scene plays out as part of the fiasco that is George trying to see if the lost boy has money. And that trick, I'll call it, only adds to the humor as our mind is filling in the visuals of the craziness that we're overhearing. I also enjoyed the music, which is by Quincy Jones. I thought it had a great sound and suited the movie so well. I can't remember any particular tracks right at this moment, but I love that 70s sound. If I could say anything about this movie, don't go into it expecting a relaxing, breezy comedy. As soon as it starts, you're grabbed by the throat and pulled along for the ride. It's almost got the breathless pace of an action movie, and I really love that, but you do feel a little tired out by the time the credits roll. In amongst all the crazy goings-on, there is a nice message about appreciating what you have at home, and just because a city is big and famous and filled with a amazing variety of careers and restaurants and excitement, sometimes they're not all they're cracked up to be. I thought that was a nice point to include in this film and gave it a slight sentimental hook towards the end. So if you're in the mood for a very funny movie headed by two great comedic performances, I highly recommend The Out of Towners. Thanks so much for watching my review. If you enjoyed it, I hope you'll check out my other reviews on my channel, Hildebrand Productions. Thanks again, and adios for now.